So raise your hand if you have if you use Salesforce or you've used Salesforce here or if you've at least seen Salesforce. Okay. So if you are a sales manager or a sales user, I'm sure you love the user interface for Salesforce and you love spending your time in that every day. Probably not. It's a pretty terrible experience. Um, Salesforce tried to launch a product a while back called Chatter that was kind of meant to encourage people to do things in Salesforce. It's this monotonous thing that they do, but it's really important. As a sales person, you need Salesforce to get leads. To make phone calls, do your sets. If you are a sales manager, you need to monitor that data, close deals, etc. So what people like does is we make social selling easy. So you're like, okay, great. What's social selling? So social selling is kind of a blanket term. I kind of uh, equate it to the cloud, uh, where it's like the cloud. Look, the cloud existed for a long time. All right, it was timeshare computing, and then it was shared hosting, and then it was grid computing. Now it's cloud computing. We've all accepted that term. That's awesome. Um, but social selling is really kind of uh, along the terms of like sales enablement, and it's like things you need to do to be really successful at sales. So if you are in business development, the things that you need to do is before you pick up the phone and try and contact that lead, you should probably do some research. Find out what their, what their Twitter handle is or LinkedIn. How do you know them? Where are they working? Where did they go to school? Is there any kind of connection? At the very least, you should learn a little bit about them so when you get them on the phone, um, you kind of can create some kind of personal information or relationship with them so at least you know a little bit about the person you're speaking with. You're not just another guy who calls me, and I love the recruiters in the audience, but you call me very frequently, and you just kind of say, hey, I'm trying to sell you some employees or something, and you know, I'm pretty easy to find on the internet. It'd be nice if you at least did a little research. So anyway, it'll improve your sales potential, and PeopleLinks makes this super easy. So um, like Mike mentioned, we went through uh, a little bit of uh, evolution over the past year, and what we found with our product, while, and I hate this word, uh, we originally were kind of focused on what's called quote unquote gamification. Um, which really was sort of pointsification, where you kind of like got some engagement and sort of dropped off. And what we really created was within sales teams, the culture is really based on team selling. And so sales teams that are really successful, uh, there's a team aspect to it. Yes, they might like have individual commissions related to their performance, but uh, really good sales teams perform as a team. So uh, we brought that into our product and we said, you know what, as a social company, we aren't very social. So as kind of a layer on top of uh, Salesforce and other business data and other social networks, we bring that all in to the salesperson so they can see what optimizations the users are performing, what content they're sharing, what kind of interaction that they're getting, and they can sort of cheer each other on and encourage each other to perform other things. And as a baseline for this product, we sort of looked at Facebook. So we created this concept of a timeline. A lot of our users are a little older um, corporate employees. So as a way to baseline the product and the product experience, they're all very familiar with Facebook. And Back to Bia's point earlier, we kind of used this when we were talking to our users and figuring out like how we can express you know social behaviors to them. They really get Facebook. They don't really get LinkedIn all the time, and this is kind of a way to sort of encourage that behavior. Um, so what PeopleLinks does is we offer to you like you know content to share. We don't encourage what we call social diarrhea. Um, we encourage you to actually read the articles you're sharing, have a point of view on them with what, what you put out there on the internet. But as a salesperson, people probably aren't necessarily always following you, but you're following them. Uh, and what we do with that is we have a concept here of optimizations. There's some simple ones um, that an admin or a sales manager can kind of push through. Um, so they'll create optimizations for their sales teams about things that they should do uh, to make themselves look better online. So when they're contacting people or reaching out to them either through social networks or on the phone, they can find them and know who they are. Uh, this does spin off, and I'll show you in a second, into what we're doing now, which is it's all driven by Salesforce. So when things occur in Salesforce, you're assigned a lead, an opportunity, event changes, whatever, dynamically makes recommendations around things you should do, people you should follow, who you should call, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're an entry-level salesperson, you're just out of college, you're hungry for your new sales job, people just makes it really easy to look better online and start connecting with actual decision makers at companies who probably have been there a long time, they're much more senior than you, and making yourself appear much better and be much more knowledgeable about what you're doing, hence behave like a really experienced business development person. Um, some of the content for the articles that we share, I kind of mentioned before with some research, like we spent a lot of time looking at encouraging you to read and curate content behaviors. It's still stretched, but whatever. Um, <clears throat> And so actually read the content, understand it, have a point of view on it, like send it to somebody as content that's relevant to them and in their industry, if that's who you're selling into. Um, 
we built a concept of a leaderboard, and this is kind of the gamification aspect. What people do want to know kind of how the performing salespeople, by definition, are competitive. Uh, as a technical person, this is sort of the classic sales versus tech problem. It's a different culture. But at the end of the day, what we learned, uh, we were kind of anti this leaderboard concept for a minute, but then as we talked to more users, we realized this is really important to them, and like the more activity that they drive, they do want to see the results. And it's not too abnormal, especially for social behaviors. We all use Instagram and you know Facebook and whatever, and, and you can admit it, you feel good when you get a lot of likes and a lot of traction with your share. So you know, you're like, my Insta game is on right now. I'm killing it. Um, for the administrator, which is our sales manager that we, uh, that we sell to, um, we offer some, some pretty simple reporting. Uh, we're building into a ton of other stuff right now with Salesforce, I'll show you that in a second, um, where we do shares, click analysis, optimizations, invites accepted to kind of show how your sales team is performing and uh, some engagement over time and clicks over time. I can't scroll down on this display. Um, and what's really useful here is if you're a sales manager at a big corporation, uh, some of our clients include Comcast, um, Accenture, our account manager's here right now, our head of client services, she could probably shout out some names. Um, but really, really big corporations that have you know tens of thousands of employees. And if you want to send content to share or things people should do on social networks, the only way you can really do it is email and you have no way of doing individual level tracking and splitting that data based on social networks. So that's just kind of the start. Like These tools don't exist. They might seem fairly simple and straightforward, but at a really big corporation where you're managing hundreds of employees, something like this is, is uh, pretty much a godsend for them. Um, so it's really, really easy to use our sales, uh, our end users, our salespeople like spending time in PeopleLinks much more than they like spending time in Salesforce. So you can kind of imagine where we might be heading product-wise to kind of uh, encourage Salesforce behavior, but just not through Salesforce because it's kind of a miserable experience. Nothing against Salesforce. One of their head guys is on our board. Um, but so yeah, here's Salesforce. This is awesome. I'm really stoked to look at this every day as a salesperson. Um, but what PeopleLinks does for you, and their Salesforce mobile product, which is new, uh, it's called Salesforce One, um, is actually pretty cool. And it just puts it on your phone. It makes it really easy to use. We have an integration to that. So you flip that open, you get a sign-in opportunity, and PeopleLinks will just make some basic recommendations for you. Here's kind of the first one I pulled up. It's like, you've got this lead. You're going to call them. You should follow them on Twitter. You should learn more about them and encourage this behavior. So right now, the only playbook that a sales manager has, like I said, is the ability to kind of do a PowerPoint presentation, do some base level coaching when that salesperson first joins. But they can't do ongoing mentoring, and they certainly can't do it at scale. They kind of have to rely on just intuition or hopefully learning before they go. And a lot of times, it sets them up to fail. And then that's why salespeople kind of iterate a few times before they finally get it at some other company. So if you're the sales company that's you know the, the tiring people in your department, you certainly want to set them up for success at every turn because it's not just that they weren't successful, right? They're burning leads. Every time you talk to a lead and have that touch point, you know, you're hurting that opportunity if you keep having a different person reach out over and over again when you could have nailed it the first time. Um, so that's what PeopleLinks is and does. We are presenting at Dreamforce this year. We'll be on stage with some of our clients. Um, so we've got a pretty tight integration with those guys. And lots of cool stuff to come. I've got kind of a short window here. Might be under the 10 minute window. OK. Uh, happy to drive you more into the product. Um, or if you'd like, uh, I can take some questions on sort of our product development methodology. I'm a big advocate of product management. Uh, tie back into Bia's talk. Um, when we first started at PeopleLinks, I was tasked with building a tech team. And they asked me who my first hire would be. And it was a product manager, actually. His brother works at Tickly. But, um, so it was a product manager for the reasons that Bia said, which was, look, I can, we can get great developers in here to build st crazy stuff all day long. But if we don't really know like, what the heck we're building, especially if we're building a product in a brand new category, um, we're just going to waste a lot of time. And we're going to write a lot of code, and then we're going to have to throw it all out, and everybody's going to hate it. So we spent a lot of time doing that, and we've iterated and a few times. But we're heading in the right direction, and people are pretty stoked with what we're building. Um, so with that, if you've got any questions. Uh, well, no, I, we work together briefly, so uh, you know, I'm a big fan of Bia's. Um, but one thing that I would tie to product management, which I may have stolen from Friday Night Lights because my wife and I are watching it right now on Netflix, um, is I think really good products, it's, like, it's pretty simple, right? They get a little bit better, they get a little bit worse every day. So it's like you just got to go in there every day. There's a thousand decisions with your product every single day. And for Tim, who I worked with for quite a long time, I take a leave there, can attest to. The little decisions add up. So if it's a little switch in the button on your settings page, Ah, oh, it's a switch. It takes two seconds, but that adds up into bigger things. So, really, what good product managers do, and whether you are, or you know, have the luxury of hiring a specific person for a role, you're doing it yourself. That's what it comes down to: is my product getting a little bit better, a little bit worse every day? That's pretty much it.
I, mean, I think it's step one. You know, you you will be better off if you recognize that um, you need to fill the product management role, right? So I heard a quote a while back from from a company I talked to uh, that like the goal of an entrepreneur is like to kind of give everything away. So you start off and you do everything, and over time you create roles and you give responsibilities, and then at some point you have an exit and you've essentially given everything away. You've created a company, a culture, and you've had your exit, you're no longer a part of this thing. And so the sooner that you can recognize that you are acting as a product manager and like how to make project product management decisions, if you're bootstrapping, if you're outsourcing, whatever you're doing, you're just gonna get more value. And there's plenty of material out there to help you make better decisions so you don't waste time and money, which is, especially time, uh, which is the most expensive thing for a startup. Sure. So um, for what we're calling People Links 3, we went through a period where we were using the LinkedIn API to do some pretty cool stuff, and then we realized LinkedIn's kind of a dinosaur with their API, and we decided that we were going to do something else. Um, and so we went through this phase of trying to kind of figure out these things. And so Mark, our product manager, did a really good job of having PowerPoint slides where we kind of talk about different feature categories that have come up, and then on each slide we had phases, usually three phases, where it's like, all right, here's three ideas, okay? So imagine three slides, one, two, three. And then for each slide, here's like three levels of depth. And so level number one was like, let's test this really simple idea about what's optimizations, right? And all optimizations are, if you go back to our product real quick, is basically some text, a title, some text, a link, and you can complete it or dismiss it. And we were kind of like, this is the dumbest feature I've ever seen. It's a to-do list. But what we found testing it, this is, I actually said that as the tech guy, you know? Like, this is really stupid. Um, but what we found was that companies were like, no, this is actually really awesome because I have no way of distributing this stuff and wouldn't it be really cool if I could do it like automatically, like just kind of trigger these to-dos, like push a notification that says like, hey, this opportunity to this or, you know, future thinking, like if somebody tweets something and the content in that article has certain keywords that we're spying on, you know, maybe they should know and tweet back at them. So it's like, oh, hey, I'd love to talk to you about social business or whatever. Um, and so that was like a really good opportunity. It's something that was like, well, it's really cheap to build. Let's test it. And we did. And it turned out that this resonated really strongly. And it's kind of becoming the focus of our application. So it's so imagine like, you know, Three slides wide and then three slides deep. And if you break it into that, you can usually find something that you can test really easy. That's a good question. Uh, it didn't. It, okay, it didn't really. So the question is, that, did this cost a fortune to like kind of pivot the company? It actually didn't because, believe it or not, this is really close to what we were doing. It's just kind of with a different spin. And the different spin is we may have had a disagreement around LinkedIn's terms of service when we started doing with things with Salesforce. Happy to discuss that over beers, but uh, you know. Um, and so what we but what we found was that we, we realized that there was an appetite for this stuff. So we kind of just turned it on its head. Um, we had already had a lot of these designs in the can for People Links 3. It just had a little bit of a different flair, so we sort of reversed it in terms of our focus on Salesforce versus LinkedIn. Um, so we didn't really, you know, we adjusted the ship, but we didn't like decide to go to, I don't know, Portugal instead of Argentina or something. So that's why it didn't cost a fortune. And a lot of times when you have to pivot, it's like maybe you're not so far off, right? Um, maybe you just need to ask a couple more questions and it's just a slight adjustment. Thanks very much, Keith. Cool, thanks. Thanks, guys.